the periodic table, the how and why. Make sure you have your periodic tables out and you have printed off the worksheet, the periodic table, the how and why. Fill in the blanks as you watch this YouTube video. Mendeleev's Periodic Table In 1869, Dmitry Mendeleev developed a table by writing the elements in order of increasing atomic mass. He discovered a pattern of repeating properties. He grouped the elements in columns by similar properties in order of increasing atomic mass. Let's look at the following quote by Dmitry Mendeleev. If all the elements be arranged in order of their atomic weights, a periodic repetition of properties is obtained. Mendeleev found some inconsistencies in this arrangement, and he felt that the properties were more important than the atomic mass, so he switched the order of these elements that did not fit the trend. He also found some gaps, some missing elements, and he concluded that there must be some undiscovered elements. And based on his periodic table, he was able to predict the properties of these undiscovered elements before they were even found. While Mendeleev arranged his periodic table according to atomic mass, the modern periodic table is arranged according to increasing atomic number. The elements are still grouped by properties. Elements with similar properties wind up in the same column. The properties of elements depend on the structure of the atom. While the number of protons identify the particular element, the electronic structure determines the chemical properties. The modern periodic table contains an additional column of elements that Mendeleev didn't know about. These are the noble gases. They had not been discovered yet because they did not react with anything. The periodic law states that the properties of elements are periodic functions of their atomic numbers. The periodic table is made up of horizontal rows called periods. There are currently seven periods on the periodic table which represent the seven energy levels in which electrons move. Seven periods, seven energy levels. Let's consider the electron configurations and valence electrons for the first element in every period. The first element in each period has one valence electron. Hydrogen has one valence electron in the first energy level. Lithium has one valence electron in the second energy level. Sodium has one valence electron in the third energy level, and so on. Let's now look at the last element in each period. The last element in each period has eight valence electrons, except for helium, which has two valence electrons. Look at neon. Neon has an electron configuration of two, eight. Eight valence electrons in the second energy level. 
Argon has eight valence electrons in the third energy level, and so on. The last element in each period has eight valence electrons. The periodic table is also made up of vertical columns, which are called groups or families. Elements in the same column, the same group or family, have similar properties because they have the same number of valence electrons. As you go down a vertical column, the number of valence electrons does not change. Going from top to bottom, however, each element has one more occupied principal energy level. In other words, the valence electrons go into higher energy levels. N equals 1. The valence electron is in the first energy level. N equals 2. The valence electrons are in the second energy level. N equals 3 the third energy level, and so on. As you go down a family, there is one more occupied principal energy level. The group one elements are called the alkali metals. The group two elements are called the alkaline earth metals. Group one has one valence electron. Group two has two valence electrons. Let's now skip over to group 17. Group 17 are the halogens. The halogens have seven valence electrons. Group 18 are the noble gases. The noble gases all have eight valence electrons except for helium, which has two. Let's look at our metals. The metals are located on the left side of the periodic table. Look at the staircase. Everything to the left of the staircase is considered a metal. Metals have high heat and electrical conductivity. They are malleable, ductile, and they have luster. Metals are shiny. Metals lose electrons and form positive ions called cations. Metals react by losing electrons. Your most reactive metals are those that lose electrons most readily. More than two-thirds of the elements on the periodic table are metals. Metallic properties are most pronounced in the lower left-hand corner. Cesium, francium. All are solids except for mercury, which is a liquid at room temperature. As you go down a family and across a period from right to left, metallic character increases. That means that these elements lose electrons most readily. Nonmetals, on the other hand, are located on the right side of the periodic table. They tend to be brittle as solids. They are non-conductors. They do not conduct heat or electricity. Instead, they tend to be good insulators. They are dull. They have no luster. They tend to gain electrons and form negative ions called anions. Nonmetals react by gaining electrons. The properties are most pronounced in the upper right hand corner fluorine, chlorine, oxygen, and sulfur. Those are your most reactive nonmetals. The noble gases are not considered to be reactive nonmetals because they already have eight valence electrons and they are stable. Fluorine, chlorine, both have seven valence electrons and they are determined to gain one more electron to acquire a stable octet. 
as you go up a family and across a period from left to right, non-metallic character increases. The metalloids or semi-metals are located on the staircase. Metalloids have properties of both metals and non-metals. They are semiconductors. Silicon and germanium are very good semiconductors and are used in the computer industry. The six metalloids are boron, silicon, germanium, arsenic, antimony, and tellurium.